So it's a little bit of a mix up too of uh, recombinations of different videos that I've put into the different playlists in the past, um, which you can then kind of cross reference and see why maybe they were in those positions. And I mean, this doesn't have to be <laughs> that difficult um, or that complicated, but if you know the playlist, it's, it's kind of interesting to see um, how the different videos tell different stories and extract different things from um, their lineup, basically. Um, and you can kind of compare and contrast, like I said, with the previous uh, divination playlist. So these are meant to be more of um, reflections of what's going on. Um, again, it kind of just depends on when I put things up. And um, it really is all just kind of based on my own feelings about things. It doesn't necessarily even have to pertain to a specific area, just an emotion or something that's coming through. And sometimes you just kind of like have to find a way of expressing that and um, put it out there. And I find that, you know, everyone sort, sort of, um, you know, everyone gets something different from from the videos, from the um, trailers or music or lyrics or whatever it is. So hopefully they apply to you in some way too and kind of just see how we're all sort of connected through emotion, through the different things coming into our world. So um, I, uh, I hope that they are helpful uh, for you and just, yeah, see what, see what, how they work out for you. Um, I think that, uh, um, I try at least to, if there's one, something that I, whatever I, I put out there tends to sort of, I don't know how I've tried to explain this before, so I'm not going to try it again, but it just sort of magnifies or something. And so I try to put a balance of, um, different, you know, beliefs, different, um, points of view, perspectives, um, try to see the spectrum of things a little bit, um, or at least just show different, you know, uh, vignettes and different scenes from the same movie or whatever it is, you know, just to, um, kind of balance out, um, kind of going along the lines of like final destination or something like that. Like there's always a balance. So, um, and there always has to be. So one thing works out in favor on this side, something else is going to work out in favor on the other side. It's just more of a matter of time. So again, stay open to timing and context and how things can apply. Sometimes it's just a simple word or a phrase or sentence that's extracted from, you know, some lyrics or whatever. So, um, and that is what is the message, the sign clue for you. And so hopefully you are able to find some signs and clues and inspiration, I guess, um, wisdom, for the future, um, or whatever it is you're going through now and, um, are needing clarity on. So, um, yeah, just stay open-minded to how messages can come through and different wording, different ways of understanding things. So I thought I would start out with energy cards. Um, and, oops, kind of mix up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, these are like the who, what, and where of energy that may be affecting you in the coming day, week, um, however long. I find that the emotions I experience and uh, intuitive sorts of feelings I get um, tend to manifest or apply to people, others, um, sometimes on a grander scale. But um, in the next day to week, sometimes months, just depends on what it is and how much time is necessary for preparation for people to understand. Anyways, um, so let's just get started. This is the signs, um, astrological signs, and um, it may be something for you to pay attention to or just to enhance or um, know about how they might be affecting you in different areas. So let's see. General energies for the highest and greatest good of all. Um, one sign. Capricorn. So it's about your goals and reality and business and dedication. It's the, you know, it's kind of just plugging through and just going for it and, you know, focusing. <laughs> 
and um, rules and kind of just, I mean, being a little bit, um, I don't say bullheaded, but just um, knowing where you want to go and um, taking all the necessary steps in order to get to that point. Um, whether it's a short term, short term or long term goal, um, it's just sort of um, making your way through slowly but steady. Cancer's on the bottom. That's funny because they are opposite. Um, being a water sign, and this is an earth sign, so a lot of earth energy. Maybe it's about trying to find some sort of balance between um, all the intuitive and sometimes psychic or uh, just feeling. Um, a little bit emotional, a little bit um, just sensitive, I think, uh, energy, maybe within the workplace or within your day-to-day -day reality. So, I just don't know, like, um, and I usually do these backwards, or I just did this backwards. Um, I haven't used these cards in a while, but these are planets, and so it's more like the who, and the signs are the what, the kind of business sensitive sensitivity in business, uh, maybe energy coming through, and the house is the area of life. So hopefully that makes sense. The planets, um, so the who, general energies, Mars, it's a little bit of aggression, a little bit of, um, a lot of energy, um, confrontation. Um, I feel like it's very, um, it's like making sure that you, you you do the things you need to do, you get them done. It's just having a lot of, I, can't, I feel like it goes well with the Capricorn energy, especially if you're trying to get a lot of things done. Um, it's going to have a lot of um, focus and drive and um, just energy to tackle the things that you sometimes put off maybe or yeah, it's, it's force yourself to do something. Um, confrontation, action. So it is about that sort of... Um, it might be also warning not to be too aggressive. Um, I feel like when Mars energy is prominent in the birth chart or in the transits, it is, um, there is that sort of readiness or willingness to tackle things, to confront things, to be a bit more aggressive or to stand up for yourself. And, um, so it might, again, having to balance with that Cancerian energy and the sun how you see yourself and how you express yourself and um, again maybe standing up for your your own kind of expression how you see things your perspective um, for yourself this is also about demonstrating and realization being a leader creation um, and bringing things to light so again it might just be about having to sort of tame or something like that how you bring things to light or how you show someone something or how you express something or you know speak your mind or something but like all in all it's a lot of like get her done energy you know like houses and what area of life will these energies be affecting people for the next week or so in the seventh house partnership and balance and cooperation and partnerships of all kinds, even like, again, work partnerships, could be any sort of collaboration, something like that, your, your colleagues, um, diplomacy, relationships, and fairness, being originally ruled by Libra, it's all about um, that sort of balance partnership, um, even within yourself, like finding that sort of, again, balance of energy and just maybe having to be more cognizant or aware of these things that are going on in the next week or so and how you interact with others and how you, again, get your point across or how you um, work out certain deals or, you know, find a balance or cooperate in group settings, things like that. If it has more to do with relationships and to get some new relationship cards so or sex love, romance, cards, whatever you want to call them, um, and so it might have to do with your relationship, and um, there might be a lot of, like, passion in your relationship going on this week, or feeling passionate about something that you're working on. Um, I feel like Capricorn, though, is, like, something that's 
you're in it for the long haul. So I feel like whatever it is that you're doing now is going to have a lot of maybe ripple effects or um, long-term um, repercussion sounds wrong, sounds very negative, but just, I guess, again, I think it's new moon or it was, I feel like um, it's about setting goals and the things that you want to see happen and accomplish and dedication again. So especially maybe in business, but Capricorn doesn't just have to deal with business and again, your day-to-day -day reality and things that you, I just feel like it's about using more of like, a, you know, not being sensitive with the Cancerian energy and just but being diplomatic and working well with others and um, yeah, and finding like a very fair balance in whatever it is that you're doing. So um, keeping that in mind, whatever you have in the seventh house might be important. Um, so let's see. Oops. <laughs> Stopped a little. It's a little moonstone. Um, I'll just pull a rune and I'll put a link below for that to get all this kind of stuff out of the way. I always find that there's more information and just keywords and things that stand out to me that provide a little bit of guidance or clarity on whatever it is I'm wondering about or the reading or, you know, um, just interesting to look up if you want to. So I'll put the link in the expanded details below. General energies, rune. Guidance, wisdom, clarity on coming week or for this reading. Energies to utilize or to be aware of. Disruption, Hakawas. So 19, um, I feel like this always kind of reminds me of the tower card. Um, I don't know if it has exactly the same connotation and separation there, uh, so there might be some sort of breakup or going your separate ways as far as like business kind of things go and having to just be diplomatic about it. Um, it also could just be something, oh, cool too here actually. Um, I thought of uh, more so, because this means inheritance and inheriting and read it um but i thought more so of like maybe you are inheriting like a business promotion or something you're having to leave a job for something better or um but there is still this element of separation um so um that below the other one that i pulled was initiation this is the lot cup so it has to deal with fate being a master of your own fate working with the fates it's kind of like rolling the dice. Um, so, um, and also like division to four separation, but I also think of a fourth um, sage in the alchemical cycle. Um, so the opposite of separation would be uh, come together. It's kind of like you need to separate things out so that they can come together in a more, if things were disjointed, to come together in a, you know, like when you break a bone or something, like you have to... I don't know, I've never actually broken a bone, but <laughs> um, in order to put it back right in a way. Um, this is when things are coming together in a way that they complement one another. So again, I feel like it's about that sort of seventh house diplomacy, working well with others and finding that sort of balance inwardly and outwardly, um, and maybe having to roll the dice and take a chance with something. Um, maybe these numbers are important to you, 19 reducing down to um, a one and also six and four, one, so 11 or two. Again, I feel like there's that element of balance. Twos are usually having to do with partnerships of any kind and or balance choice. So see how that works out for you and see if any of those um, uh, descriptions of the rooms that I put below uh, apply to you. Um, Uh, angel oracle or guardian angel maybe for some encouragement for the coming week spiritual gifts things like that to pay attention to to work on or hone um, maybe just some good advice spread your wings <laughs> 
Archangel Ariel, do not hold back right now. The timing is perfect and you are ready to soar. So I feel like that's more of like a positive Pagalas uh, and a lot cup and just like spreading your wings, being able to, whatever the outcome, I guess, sort of um, take on something new, uh, spread your wings and fly. All these like cheesy lines are coming to mind, but um, however that applies to you, maybe you are a little bit hesitant and you're just kind of like needing that little push to get going with something. Um, I feel like these, it's a really good omen. Um, you're ready to soar and nurture. And that kind of goes along with that Cancerian energy. Um, Archangel Gabriel, as you nurture a child, you nurture your own inner child. Both activities are important for you right now. There's a big like, gap here, that's weird. Um, yeah, so taking care of yourself and knowing what you need in order to spread your wings and fly. So let's see. All right, so I got these, um, these are interesting cards. Uh, they're called Vice Versa. Vice versa tarot, and um, we'll see how this goes. I haven't even really used them for myself yet, and so um, they might be more informative or more confusing. <laughs> we'll see, um, because there's images on both sides. Normally, I'm used to uh, deciding, you know, if if something's coming past future or. Uh, messages pertaining to someone else, your external world versus your personal feelings being upright or reversed. Now there's four options, upright, reversed, <laughs> um, upside down, this way, that way. So it's kind of like the I Ching, like all these different options now. Um, so we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to pull um, one card for, I'm going to pull three cards, past, present, and future. And um, Maybe a couple extras since we are focusing more on the future, less on the past, but see how we got to where we are and what's going on now and how those things might affect you going forward. Um, let's pull some cards. <laughs> and um, I don't know how to do this exactly because I have to not look at it. Um, there's images on both sides. So past, general energies, recent past that have Led to current events or current stage. To clarify the past, maybe too. In order to move forward. This is the Nine of Wands. So, this so is like, what's next? You know, a little bit like on your toes, I feel like. He looks a little bit befuddled, like. Why is his stick so long and all the others are so short? You know, like, was he supposed to do with these? That's not normally the typical meaning of the card, but um, he just looks very, like, almost frustrated. Like, he has to... This is usually just about, like, um, being at the end of, of a cycle. Um, being at the end of something, ready to start over. Um, you've been through a lot, a lot of experiences, a lot of things that have led to this point, and you have all this, all this backup in a way um, to help you make a decision going forward. On the back is this, um, so you can kind of see from his perspective what he's looking at, which is interesting. It's a girl who's like beckoning towards him and he's I think wondering if he should go into the scary dark cave and, and follow this girl. Um, anyways, um, so it's fire energy though and it's, um, you know, wands having to do with your action, um, kind of like the Mars, uh, passion, action, um, creativity, ideas, things of that nature. It's being a little bit worried, a little bit apprehensive, um, maybe because you've been through a lot of different experiences and things that have gone different directions, different ways, have ended up some positive, some negative, and um, 
maybe you're just at this point where you're like, well, I'm not really sure which, you know, um, which leads to the outcome you want, um, to that next stage. Um, but, um, yeah, she looks like she's like beckoning to him. It came out like this though. So I kind of, kind of feel like it's the same thing with that, like spread your wings and like, maybe this is where you're standing and you just can't really see what's in front of you, but it's not so bad. Or maybe read from the book <laughs> and see. This is Nine of Wands. Just quickly go through that. Um, the war is over. You've done well when it's this way. There are battle scars but you, that you'll always bear, but on the whole, you've been lucky and your skills have grown significantly through being tested again and again. Um, now is the time to look back and consider what it, it was all about. What have you been fighting for? Was the effort worth the rewards? What are the spoils of your victory and how will you enjoy them? So the flip side of that is um, your life force has been depleted by your hard work and fierce struggles and must be restored. The seductive barefoot woman represents the primal force and her cave is the womb of spiritual rebirth. It's time to remove your armor, lay down your defenses and surrender to the purely animal needs to feel alive in body and soul. So what do you need to do in order to feel that way? Um, which one do you resonate more with? Do you feel like you are, <laughs> you've been through a lot, but you're still feeling pretty positive and you're like, just think God that's over or are you still a little bit apprehensive and feeling a little bit depleted and do you need to take a little bit of a respite and, you know, think about the things that have, um, you know, focus on the good stuff and um, move the armor, lay down your defenses, surrender to the purely animal need to feel alive. So, also maybe um, the ninth is important or, um, like nine, nine days, nine weeks, um, let's see, that was for the present, current energies, I always like, put her up here, current energies, current general energies, present, one card for the present. need to know, be aware of, look forward to, bring clarity to the present. This is the King of Cups. I pulled it out like this, so you can see which one applies to you more so. And the Knight of Cups is on the bottom, so it's kind of I a lot of watery energy and a lot of Take charge. I feel like sometimes he looks a little bit unstable, the King of Cups, because you know he's on an island by himself and things like that. But here he looks pretty confident. Like he knows exactly how to get off his little graph and um let's see, let's see what it says. <laughs> interesting because they give like two perspectives um did I miss him? Here's the king. oh I see they group them together um Chalices. Let's see. 
I mean, there's the obvious, like I, you know, could be Cancerian energy, any of the water signs, Scorpio, um, Pisces or Cancer. Um, and it's just about it probably feeling emotionally in control, feeling, um, let's see what it says. It could be a little bit isolated, just maybe needing to reach out to people. Let's read the side first. By daylight, the king looks out towards the open sea, light clouds um, blow in a soft blue sky, smiling dolphin swims behind his throne. The big secret the queen of chalices is keeping is a core of independence. The king's big secret is his playfulness. Most people may have the impression that he lives his life in a state of spiritual earnestness, even uh, solemn, even solemnly. Um, he's actually quite joyous in his spirituality, happy in his love, and sometimes just plain silly. Those are those who are closest to him benefit from his lightheartedness, though those in his outer circle may know only his quieter ways of wisdom. And that was the inner self. Maybe what lies below. <laughs> outer self. Um, the king in ornate robes sits upon a rocky throne under a starry night sky. He wears a great golden fish upon his breast. His right hand lifts a silver chalice and his left hand holds a scepter topped with a bronze water lily. Um, his gaze is steady and perceptive. He seems to look into your heart and perhaps your soul too. Everything about him speaks of a love of beauty and attention to symbolism. This is a wise and compassionate teacher by avocation, if not vocation. The fish necklace symbolizes the Piscean quality of the sacrifice to his spiritual calling. The water lily scepter shows his, his authority is tempered by peace. The night and the dark sea are in keeping with the outer self he presents to the world, his vastness of the cosmos, the fathomless depths of wisdom. So about having lots of wisdom, spiritual wisdom. Um, which, yeah, I do. I mean, I kind of agree with that. I feel like there is this element of playfulness. You, you know, sea world or any of, you know, just fish jumping around, that kind of... Um, fun lightheartedness like just being a kid and playing in the pool and just maybe needing to tap into that a little bit more or see that within um, yourself maybe you're just feeling very emotional you're feeling a little bit maybe you've gotten over some sort of breakup too since the seventh house has to do with partnerships um, it came to an end in the recent past and you are feeling good about the future uh, you're feeling uh, maybe again that like completeness that wholeness within yourself like just getting to a good place and um, maybe having feelings for someone else and maybe not getting too overly sensitive about things that you can't control or things that you don't know how to anticipate um, seeking things as they go and for future. This coming week, what is to be expected? What do people need to know? No judgment. The moon's on the bottom here. Use that as like a... This is an interesting... We have like the eclipse here. It shows two different sides of the moon. Um, but this came out like that. Judgment. <laughs> His eyes are funny. Um, and uh, yeah, so night and day in a way, although this looks more like um, a very intense, intense, intense morning. Um, Um, I don't know if I want to, okay, so normally, I mean, I've joked before in the past that, like, judgment is, like, the final judgment, and that's not necessarily what it, not typically what it means at all, so, um, that's what this card side is saying, um, day of judgment is here, so it might just be feeling judged for some sort of competition, or maybe in the workplace, maybe you're being evaluated, job skill, performance-wise, that kind of thing, 
Um, but all people must come naked and without shame before the deity and judged according to their deeds. The angel of the resurrection appears in a blaze of glory, carrying the power of the sun that shines within him. His eyes see far beyond the mortal forms, and nothing is hidden from sight. In his right hand he holds the shofar, the ram's horns, and is blown on the day of atonement. Um, all matter is burned away, it kind of also reminds me of that chemical cycle. And, pu and purification until only the spirit remains to be judged. We're in this card, let me get this card side up. Time spiritual awakening has arrived. You are called to atone for your, your sins and other words to correct your mistakes where it is possible. To ask for forgiveness, offer forgiveness to others. Atonement is not groveling or self loathing, but rather the acceptance of human failings and foibles. Judgment is related to justice, and in that, in that both deliver only what is fair, what has been earned for better or worse. The judgment card is a gift because it's an opportunity to watch your spirit clean. So yeah, looking for um, opportunities uh, to maybe make amends or um, uh, just come to terms maybe with something or um, looking for the gift in all things like that. So it could just be like some sort of wake up call, um, hearing the music, some sort of like a very well just a call like something being brought to your attention um, that maybe you hadn't been paying attention to before that needs to be addressed or something like that. You could be feeling a little bit judged, but um, maybe again, it's just having to get on the same page with people because it again is 20, and so it's another partnership too kind of thing. So when you get the side in the reading, consider this. What would you bring before the angel of judgment? <laughs> what might represent your understanding of your life so far? What would you offer as you move forward to the next phase? So again, kind of like phases, the moon here, phases of the moon, um, and uh, end of cycle here. What would you offer as you move forward to the next phase? And what is needed to let your light heart and innocence as a child be reborn? So, let's see. And the moon, again, is about uh, bringing things to light. Um, it's kind of like the dark side of the moon, I guess. Um, or some sort of eclipse when things are shadowed over. But she looks like she's able to bring light to a situation herself. Like there's almost like this sort of um, moon energy being filtered down into her. She has a bowl here and light coming out of her palm, which makes me think of like your palm here. Um, constellations to just connecting the dots and um, again that Cancerian Piscean energy that is very much attached to I want to say dependent like just very informed by moon lunar cycles and um, it's also one of the things I put into this, uh, the playlist from last week. It was lunar phase, or maybe it was this week. <laughs> they all start to sort of um, mix at this point. But um, yeah, just some ideas of my own um, of how you would, you know, affect um, affect things like gravity, affect things like. Um, the tides and just uh, speeding up um, lunar phases, if you could replicate that in some way, or things like that. Um, I just like to explore different thoughts, and that is mainly my agenda <laughs> with um, these playlists. But um, again, just hopefully they are good reflections of how, you know, majority of people um, or situations might be affecting people and um, just emotions and things to be aware of. Um, so here we have the other side. Maybe things might be hidden over a little bit because this is what came up. And needing to bring light to that situation. There might be someone who's a little bit underhanded, I want to say. Because um, here, this is where like things are brought to light. This is where you are able to see in the dark. You are able to make sense of something. Um, secrets are brought to light. 
maybe you're still holding back secrets and needing to release something or confess something or share something, um, something that's been on your mind, something that, uh, you're afraid you might be judged for, um, but, uh, let's see if it has any other further meanings. It's number 18, so again, that's nine. And so again, it might have something to do with the ninth house, Jupiter, or um, Pisces. Some interesting things with these cards, so that. Um, uh, specifically, these sorts of like, silver and gold, which um, I don't know. Um, let's see what this other side of the card means. I just be paying attention to how you feel, how something makes you feel that is brought to your attention and not just sort of like, you know, whitewashing, glossing it over. Um, the cycles of the moon are reflected in the cycles of women, and thus the moon card is the card of feminine power. The woman here is the dark side of the high priestess, offering an, in, offering an initiation of sorts, a choice between a bowl of phosphorescent seawater and a glowing egg. Which are you most drawn to? Um, and what does that tell you about your psyche? Remember, rational solar thinking has no place here. <laughs> the moon shadow has turned day into night. Well, it's like day to night, night to day. She makes me look the all American, American rejects on your star. Um, yeah, just the how um, one thing evolves naturally to the next and being aware of those things so that you're able to sort of predict or um, know the best route to take. Sometimes it's about, you know, finding the best route to take, going on your way, going down um, perhaps not such a great path since this represents the dark side of the um, High Priestess that is a little bit more, um, let's say like uh, something in your subconscious that is uh, maybe a forgotten memory or something that was troublesome or um, maybe your darkest, deepest desires, that kind of thing, and those being brought um, to your attention or to light or something in some way, shape, or form that determines which path you take going forward this week. Um, so to mention your psyche and eclipse, I think of, you know, um, some total eclipse of life. Something's changing up this week. So, um, so yeah, maybe be on the lookout, pay attention for those kinds of things, or be sure you don't go down any dark alleys, that kind of thing like that. But, um, yeah, maybe the moon um, transits are important too. Um, Uh, let's see. Pull some clarifiers for uh, um, some clarifiers for these cards, um, and see if there's anything else that needs. Uh, Clarify the nine of it's the three of cups, so some sort of celebration. Um a get together, um usually with friends or maybe it's just your social circle. Um I'm just being a little bit apprehensive of uh maybe the people that you surround yourself with. Um but this is Mercury and Cancer again, so usually this is, um, and, you know, it came up right, but if it were reversed, um, just get things both ways, um, 
it could be some gossip or things like that and that's maybe why you're a little bit apprehensive um, or were in the past and it has to do with three friends um, three days three uh, minutes I find that cups usually mean minutes for me um, like a moment in time um, and like through the grapevine and so maybe there's just even in the past you were hearing a lot of information through the grapevine and through your friendship circles and um, they were maybe not so supportive because when I have wands is like it's, it's recommending to lay down the armor now lay down the defenses the war is over but um, it might be hard if you have experienced those kinds of things in the past like slander and gossip things like that um, but um, there might be also a reason to celebrate something that you submitted or something that um, you went through in the past, like even some sort of graduation, maybe you're having some sort of party. Um, and that's leading up to now. Let's see. Um, it could just be like three uh, friends, three people that are significant to you in your life that have played a significant role in the recent past for you. Um, I also kind of equate this to... Um, three of cups as like the three muses, the three graces, another theme I'm exploring, um, and how that connects to, um, <laughs> Sleeping Beauty is one of the clips I put in, um, the playlist, and because they're all in different colors, the red, blue, and green, which then I think of, um, connecting to the spectrum that we can see of colors and how it's, this whole idea of um, in theology of um, just opposites the high priestess um, dark and light um, color wise and talking about the palette color and then um, that idea of what's beautiful in you uh, being shown and expressed in your creations and how you can relate that to if you believe in a god or some sort of higher you know, power, um, that what is beautiful in, in them was then put into the creation of people and in color and entire spectrum, which you can see through the iris, the lens, um, eye, and all the mixtures of those, you know, those colors. And um, I feel like it makes sense, though, also, if you go through the playlist more in order and then put it on shuffles, you can kind of see those themes that I do kind of... There is a train of thought going on, <laughs> and so how do I get on that? Um, oh yeah, so three graces, three muses, maybe finding your muse, maybe this is your muse, and you found them. And um, yeah, and now there's reason to celebrate, and you are feeling very inspired, and um, I wanna say emotionally like uplifted, just feeling like really positive, like some sort of natural, like. Um, source. It's feeling cared for, feeling like people respecting you, feeling like um, you're in a good place in your relationship, maybe. Disappointment. I don't know if that was meant to come out. I'm going to pull a different one. Um, the Five of Cups. So, this is Scorpio, which kind of goes along with this card. I think of Scorpio with that a lot. So, maybe it has something to do with um, the depths of emotion. Mars and Scorpio being able to traverse all these different sorts of emotional tides, you know, and you're kind of maybe getting to your groove. Um, because I feel like there wasn't really anything bad that came up with this card. And I said even before I looked at the thing that looks very like peaceful, very um, calm, I guess you'd say. So maybe there was disappointment in the past, but you're moving forward and you just feel good about where you're at now. Five of Cups is feeling maybe a little bit left out or on the outside of things. Again, sort of just maybe um, just being a little bit in the dark, you know, um, 
and maybe that's what was going on in the past. And now, since I pulled this up like this, that's in the past, that's behind you, and you're looking out into new horizons, you're seeing like daylight again, you're seeing, um, so I feel like the sea and the water is, is terrifying at night, you know, you can't see what's going on below you, you can't see really, you know, just endless darkness water, it seems like, and then all of a sudden in the morning, it's just the most beautiful horizon, so it's making it through the night, um, undergoing something, um, for the future coming week um, to clarify the moon and judgment art so bringing light to some sort of artistic endeavor maybe again also the alchemical cycles going on in the background here um, mixing merging blending realities blending two opposites to sort of, again, maybe reconciliation or um, making two things go together, um, finding that balance. Could be something, again, waiting on some sort of maybe an art residency or um, waiting for that sort of judgment call, that call back um, where your inquiry is brought to light. Maybe you're just in the process of doing something that is through each step you gain a little bit more and more clarity and figure out which way you're going um, and this card side to come up so you know which which side stands out to you is one of the questions maybe there's a way to merge both of those things um, it's about having inner balance inner, and that this was also about your inner core, so maybe finding some sort of um, some sort of sorry, some sort of temperance. So what stands out to me the most is the background with like these sorts of um, like spider webby things going on in the background. So I feel like it's also sort of working things out and finding um, untangling the web, untangling what has been. Um, Again, that like disjointed to bring it back together, if that makes sense. And um, being a little bit in the dark, but finding your way through, feeling your way through something. Um, I want to say, listen up. Um, maybe you're getting some instructions or some sort of, again, clarity, uh, informal uh, instructions or informal guidance or something like that on how to complete something, or how to make two things go together. Um, how to find that sort of inner balance of maybe work and um, like personal life, that kind of thing. Um, maybe you're just getting a good piece of wisdom coming through a song or something like that. Um, maybe just paying attention to the signs and the clues and the things that are brought to your attention this week. 14 Temperance is also an angel and um, Sometimes we've got baking and just mixing, um, mixing, maybe you're mixed up, maybe you've mixed feelings about something and you're unsure of how to proceed, you're just waiting for a big sign, a big clue, big something that brings things together. And um, maybe that's what can be expected for this coming week. Um, maybe I... Uh, as you are working through something, you're finding yourself in the fifth, you start at the fourth, the runes, third, fourth, and fifth stage of alchemical cycle, um, which I put links for below too. Um, so, and her green dress stands out to me, it looks like she has like, um, like CDs on her right here. Maybe it has to do with music. I think of um, moon and judgment. Oftentimes very, maybe not to most people, but um, for me, they tend to overlap a lot with meaning. I think of, again, the tides and, um, and an orchestra of sounds creating movement and creating reverberations and um, 
and sometimes, you know, there's, he is, you know, blowing a horn here usually, and eagle on this side. Um, she has a golden egg, and I don't know, there's lots of um, symbolism coming out of the graves, coming back to life, bringing something back to life, maybe through music, maybe rediscovering, um, like, an old song you wrote, or um, just something that you used to like to do, or something that you forgot about, um, an old journal entry, something that just you look back on and brings a lot of maybe light or understanding to a situation. But I keep wanting to say music, um, maybe drums, um, and uh, some sort of, yeah, big bang, some sort of um, something that just is a wake up call usually, um, and that can affect, you know, that can apply on a multitude of levels. On a personal level, usually I feel like it's a, some sort of epiphany, something that now you know how to proceed with um, whatever it is you're working on or what direction you want to take in some sort of artistic endeavor or, you know, within a relationship all of a sudden something makes sense or why something happened in the way that it did and you've just been kind of wondering and um, feeling like you're in the dark maybe. I just opened Google Maps somehow. Um, <laughs> and uh, now you have um, some sort of clarity on, you know, how to just move forward, even if it's just one more step. And though on a larger scale, it could have some sort of big wake-up call for the masses or general um, and how things are going to affect. Just there's so much of this... Um, so much water, so much um, feelings and emotions going on. Um, moon, the king of cups, the three of cups here, five of cups, and um, cancer over there. And so, um, yeah, I feel like there's going to be some sort of breakthrough maybe too. Um, so it's up to 29, which then is 11. Um, so again, that could be, um, or, um, I think of also two high priestess, 11, two, maybe 11, 11. Um, it's just something that we are just able to find a new balance, a new place of understanding um, with whatever it is you're wondering about um, and bringing something back to life that maybe you used to like to do that um, will bring also some clarity to you. Um, but if it has maybe to do with the 11th house, because we also got the 7th house, 11th house, 7-Eleven, um, <laughs> I think of um, social networking in Aquarius and um, just, uh, yeah, your social circle and things like that. Um, so, let's see. Um, yeah. This deck, I I have, um, maybe I'll just pull one card and I'll do separate because it's getting a little bit long, but um, I'll introduce this because this is the deck I ordered, like, I don't even know how long ago. Um, back in, like, April, never, I think it was, like, lost in the mail for, like, three months. And finally, got it. Um, this is the, um, you guys will probably know about it, who know about different tarot decks, but tarot sexual magic. Um, so we'll see if it kind of bridges the gap between erotic tarot and the oracle angel romance cards. I'll just pull um, one for singles, one for couples. That's coming week, and let me do, I want to use these a little bit more, so I'll do a different reading later. But um, for singles, it's coming week. Things to anticipate, no, or look forward to. Is the Ten of Chalices, the Ten of Cups. That's great. So some sort of um, 
a little different, I think, from other ducks because usually this is a very happy ending to something, um, happy conclusion, getting together, celebrations, just um, seeing the whole spectrum here. She kind of looks like she's making an offer and he's walking away, so there might be some sort of um, some sort of ending to something, um, with 10 being a tweener card. And um, yeah. on the bottom is the hanged man. They look, wow. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're the same. The guy kind of looks the same. Maybe he like is this nine of um, wands person and he's walking away from something that was good to end and he's laying across this and he's like, well, I am glad I walked away from that. So, um, just hanging out and, um, like her ankle bracelet. Um, yeah, so, let's see. Let's see if there's a difference because it looks different to me. Um, Okay, this is Attachment, the Magic of the Chalice. Attachment between partners orients the relationship towards continuity and is necessary to form a happy family. I don't know. Um, he looks disinterested to me. So, but traditional meaning of this card is usually a very good omen that things are going to kind of end in a very happy way. We have this like whole arch seeing the whole picture. So um, it came upright. So again, maybe it has something to do with this bringing something to light. Maybe it's how you feel. Maybe you need to bring that to light. Um, maybe you've been on the fence about something. And again, you sort of need to um, get off the fence and <laughs> make some moves. Um, maybe it leads to something like this, some sort of vacation maybe even. Um, couples. Couples, couples. General energies. Oops, that's turned up. Maybe that's for you. This is the Ace of Chalices. So, a new beginning. Maybe these are switched because that seems more like I'm um, uh, a uh, singles card, but also maybe there's some overlap. Um, maybe it's just a new beginning in your relationship. Um, ecstasy. Magic of the comb and brush, loving magic, crowned by success, satisfaction, festivities, good reasons to be happy and in love. So that kind of goes along with the three of um, cups, festivities, and getting together, um, happy and love, satisfaction, success. But there is some sort of overlap that could be very, you know, talking about this sort of happy ending, successful, and being able to start fresh, new, 10-1, Maybe it's just for one specific person out there or um, see how it works out for you. But the Ace of Cups is about a brand new beginning in some way, shape, or form. Um, kind of offer, gesture, gesture, and um, just feeling, again, sort of ecstatic to be in the situation that you're in. Um, kind of overflowing with emotion, just things that are just all sort of bubbling over in a way. Um, feeling good feeling like I won, I guess, <laughs> um, to become one. Um, yeah, so but either way, it's a good uh, beginning and happy ending. <laughs> so uh, introduce the cars and you just get used to them a little bit more. But um, yeah, so you can see what stands out to you. And it just looks like coming together, though. 
Um, and even though these, this is for singles and this is for couples, again, there might just be some overlap. Or maybe you're thinking back to where things were before and you're looking forward to the new beginning. Um, I feel like cards apply in such a different, so many different ways um, and so many different combinations and fusions of meanings and energies. So um, but they both came up upright, so I feel like it's going to be a good week for love and hopefully things work out for you. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful and I hope that you have a great week and a great new moon if that's what we're in right now. Um, and uh, Aquarius and... Um, yeah, things work out in partnership and work for you. All right, bye.